It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, folks. Today we are taking a look at a deck building game called Arctic Scavengers. Now, this release I'm looking at here is the latest release, which has the base game of Arctic Scavengers and two expansions, HQ and Recon. This game, as I said, a deck building game set in a post-apocalyptic wasteland in which you are trying to uh, gather some contested resources, find scrap, find, you know, look through junk and find good, good useful items, have characters join your tribe, and at the end of the game, have the most people in your team and therefore win the game. Let me give you an overview of the game, the expansions, and then we'll come back and I'll tell you what I think of it. So here's what the box looks like. As you can see, it has uh, labels for all of the original cards, the HQ expansion, and the Recon expansion, as well as a few boards used in the game. So it's got some, uh, some pieces of cardboard here. And of course, the rule books themselves, which has the, uh, this, the base game and HQ in one rule book. And then Recon is another, in another uh, rule book. And that's basically what you get. I'm going to be showing you a brief overview of the gameplay itself, the base game. Probably with some HQ thrown in, and uh, maybe a little bit of the recon, but mostly I'll be telling you about the sorts of variants that the HQ and the recon uh, can introduce to the game. So let me give you a look at that. So here's what the game looks like set up and ready to begin. We have over here the junkyard pile, we have here the contested resources which are both really powerful cards, and they're the clock in the game when they run out games over. And then we have some choices down here for you to acquire throughout the game. These are not necessarily always the same, so these are the ones in the base game, but for example, I could, since I have the other expansions in the box, I could replace something in here with something else. So I have, for, for instance, the Rogue card here from the Recon expansion. I could replace that with the... Group leaders, for instance, if I wanted to, okay? So that doesn't matter. You can sort of make up your own set there. And uh, you're gonna get a starting deck. You're gonna shuffle that up and you draw five cards. Everybody will do this. And you are ready to uh, begin. So, one, two, three, four, five, here we go. The uh, objective of the game is to have the most people in your tribe at the end of the game. They are the bottom corner here. And on your turn, you are going to take actions with these cards and then possibly save some for the uh, uh, the skirmish phase, which happens after which happens after everybody has taken a turn. That does not happen, however, for the first two rounds in the game. So on my turn, I'm going to use these cards to do whatever I want to, and they have a symbol symbols along the side here, which tell you what you can do. So the first symbol here is the card, little card symbol. That's the draw. I could play this card for that draw symbol and draw another card from my hand. Second one is the dig symbol. Those will let you dig through the junk pile up here and find some stuff to add to your deck. The next one is the hunting symbol there, and you are going to, uh, that's gonna allow you to buy more cards from out here. Their costs being up here in the top corners. You see two symbols there, food and the medicine symbol, which is another resource some, some of the cards need to be purchased. And then uh, uh, the last one down here is the um, skirmish symbol, which is for fighting. That's your strength. So on my turn, I could do something like this. I could play a scavenger together with a shovel, which is in my starting deck. And the shovel says plus two right there, so it cannot be played on its own, but I can give a tool like a shovel to someone else like a scavenger. I could play that and then dig for three where I will draw three cards, look at them, and keep one. So for instance, uh, I have here a med kit, I have a rifle, this is actually from one of the expansions, it's just shuffled in there, and then a pickaxe. So I'll keep the pickaxe. Whatever you keep, you, you put in your discard, the rest go on the bottom of the deck, and you continue playing. Again, for the first two rounds, there's no reason to really hold anything back, but after that, then you do hold stuff back, and the way it works is, the start player for the round, which does rotate, gets to peek at the top contested card. 
they play just like I just showed you, and they will hold cards back. Then when we get to the skirmish, you show your strength, and whoever has the most strength gets the contested card. And the contested cards can be uh, very many different things. Uh, for instance, here we have one, the field crew. These are usually very strong cards. It's four people, so four victory points, and then two dig, two uh, hunting, two fighting. They're pretty strong stuff. So that's basically the kinds of cards you're going to find in here. Um, that's pretty much it. Again, the way you buy cards is by spending the dig points on the cards in your hand. You shuffle your deck whenever you need to draw more cards, just like every other deck building game, pretty much. And that's pretty much the overview of how the game works. Once these are gone, game is over. Let me show you some close-ups of some of these cards and some of the other concepts in the game. So here's one of the cards from the base game. You've seen it just now, the Scout. It gives you two to the fight. It counts as one victory point, basically one person at the end of the game. You can also uh, draw with it. That is the Scout. If you want to buy more of them, you need one of that symbol and two of the food symbol, and you can buy another one. We have here the Sniper Team. Nothing on the sides, two people. And down here you can snipe a character uh, and this is something you can do during the fight. You play this card and it basically would take out something like this. You would remove it from somebody else's total. Here we have the one I removed there, the group leaders, which is very nice. It basically allows you to pump up any other action. And in fact, it says you can use the group leaders and a tool on the same character. So I can give both this... Uh, and an, on a shovel, let's say, to my scout here and, uh, you know, do whatever I want to do. Uh, over here we have, uh, this card is already from the expansion. Again, it has a little symbol there at the bottom. This one comes with uh, a draw ability and it allows you to use that in order to buy other characters. Also, it has a, an ability down here which allows you to save a character from being sniped. This is something, again, in the HQ expansion. And an engineer also from the HQ expansion, which has down here built one building. And let's take a look at those now. So this is an HQ expansion idea, the, the buildings idea, which introduces buildings. And in fact, there is a board where you will shuffle these up and you will put them on that little board. And when you use an engineer to start building, then you will, you know, take from here and, uh, and put them next to you and start working on it. The idea with the buildings is that they take some time to finally complete them and they'll give you some permanent power that sticks around with you. And we have a few different ones here, the hydroponic garden, the, uh, the pharmacy there. There are definitely repeats, but we have also the armory, bunker here as well. Let's shift these so you can take a look. There you go. Alright, so um, that's the idea. That's what the buildings do and you can speed them up by playing more characters, otherwise you need to wait um, a certain number of turns, as denoted by the little clock here, until it's finally done, but you can play cards to speed that up. And so that's the deal with buildings. The Recon Expansion gives us a couple of new buildings, as you can see here, the Portable Decoys and the Scout Tower, and it also gives us a few new contested resources. You can kind of mix and match with those as uh, to the way you're building uh, the contested resource pile. Gives you some more stuff to put in the junk pile. Also want to mix and match with those so you don't dilute the deck. And then a few new characters as well, of course. This is the one actually that introduces the most new characters versus HQ. Really focused on the building idea. And this one focuses on uh, new characters, largely. So we have the hardy scavengers here, which would replace the regular scavengers, and they're a little bit beefier. And then we have the guard here, which can cancel one pre-skirmish action, uh, has a strength of two for fighting. As you can see, the cards start having, by this expansion, a little bit more symbology, um, slightly more complicated effects, things like that. We have the rogue we took a look at earlier, that... Um, Let's see, let me read this here. If there's a tie, oh, that's right. She's the one that can uh, win you the, the tie if you're tied during the skirmish. So there we have that. And then over here, the scrappers that let you dig from the top or from the bottom of that junkyard pile. Very cool if you know what you um, 
put under there and no one's messed with that pile, you know, that you can just go straight to the bottom because you know something good is there. Because you can only keep one card when you do that. And so that's basically it. Uh, the concept of gangs is quite simple. You are going to be placing these on the table. You'll only place this one if you're playing with buildings, otherwise you'll place the other two. And at the very end of the game, you'll check who would earn each of these uh, groups of characters that are out there in the, in the wasteland, sort of watching you develop. And they will come and join you, bringing a total of five tribes members with them and boosting your score hopefully, you know, enough to, to win you the game. And so quite simply, whoever has the most match, whoever has the most tools, and whoever has the most buildings, and that's what you need to go for. There is one more introduced in Recon, and that is the Humanitarians here, whoever has the most refugees, and that is the Gangs cards. Here we have the Tribal Leaders. The way this works, as I said, this is sort of like an avatar. You're going to get a couple of them. You'll pick the one you want to play with. And they will change the rules for you for the rest of the game, pretty much. They will allow you to do things um, like uh, being able to consider your refugees uh, as something else when they normally wouldn't have that power. You can send them to fight for you when they normally wouldn't be able to. They can team up and help each other. Also, playing two refugee cards together might give you some sort of bonus. And there are quite a few of these that do different things, they have a nice thematic bend to them. And the uh, expansion, uh, Recon expansion, introduced a couple more even. So you have quite a few of them and they do change up your game in a very interesting way. That is, again, the tribal leaders that are introduced in the HQ expansion. So there you have it, that should give you enough of an idea if Arctic Scavengers is something for you. I myself enjoy deck building games. They're not necessarily one of my favorite genres though, but I do like this one. I think the theme is very strong and is one of the, the reasons why I do enjoy the game. I like the, the post-apocalyptic thing and the theme gels well together. All the cards feel like they're in the same universe, you know, which cannot be said for many deck building games out there. So thumbs up for that in this one. And I do think that finally with this big box, we now have enough to give you uh, a lot of content, to go the distance, to give you replayability, you know. I uh, enjoyed especially the uh, idea of the leaders that, that really do shape your game in very interesting ways right off the bat. You know, right away you have sort of a, a thing you do that no one else can do, and I like that in games. And then the cards and, and the Recon uh, expansion especially. I only showed you a couple, but there are many more cards. They, um, they do allow you to sort of change up how the game plays out, how confrontational you want it to be, how, you know, how many special powers you want there to be. And so that's neat. So there you have it. Uh, Arctic Scavengers, the full set here. Thumbs up from me. If you are a, uh, a deck building fan, then two thumbs way up. Definitely go check this out. And if not, if you just enjoy card games, I would still recommend it. So there you have it. Arctic Scavengers. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.